Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at our fourth writing informative passage. This one is titled False or False? The question of falsiability. As always, we're going to be going through all 11 questions here, this entire passage, so that you understand how to approach these writing informative questions and are ready to ace the SAT writing and language section. If you like these videos or find them interesting, please be sure to like and subscribe. And with that, let's get started on our first question. What is the difference between science and pseudoscience? According to Karl Popper, one of the most potent philosophers of the 20th century, it is a matter of falsiability. And we have the word potent underlined, and we need to figure out which word should go there. Should, should it be potent, pervasive, saturated, or influential? So potent is usually not something used to describe a person. Neither is saturating, and neither is per pervasive, right? Because the person is only going to be in one spot at a time. What we usually use is influential. It, it, it affects other people, right? It affects the it affects signs that affect other people. We can say, according to Karl Popper, one of the most influential philosophers of the 20th century. That is a word that correctly applies to a person, not an object. And that is our answer. And we can move on to the next question. He claimed that in order to be truly scientific, a hypothesis or theory must be capable of being proven false. Next, he decided to make an assertion. Popper offered a new perspective on the distinction between science and pseudoscience. Well, he already made the assertion right here. Right, this was the assertion. That's the assertion. So we can't say that. Then we either have delete the portion or say through this controversial assertion or therefore with this controversial assertion. Well, therefore, there's not really a cause and effect here, right? And even if there was, it's still more wordy than this one, which says basically the same thing. So it's either going to be C or D. And we have uh, either Popper offered a new perspective on the distinction between science and pseudoscience or through this controversial assertion, Popper offered a new perspective on the distinction between science and pseudoscience. So you do need to connect it back to this previous assertion. So you have to say through the controversial assertion, because that's how Popper is offering the new perspective. Let's move on. In a 1963 lecture at Cambridge University, Popper shared that the concept of possibility had first occurred to him more than 30 years earlier when he was pondering and considering Einstein's theory of gravi gravitation and Freud's psychoanalytical approach. Let's see. So when he was pondering and considering, that's repetitive, right? Pondering and considering mean the same thing. So this is going to be a concision question, right? So we have, uh, let's see, so we can get rid of the ones that have pondering. And then we have at a time in his life that was when he had been. So at a time in his life and when he had been are repetitive because they both mean at a certain time, so that's wrong. And we get while he was, our shortest answer. Right? When he was 30 years earlier, while he was considering Einstein's theory of gravitation. That's the most concise answer, so that is going to be our answer. And we can move on to the next question. All right, Popper realized that Prude's approach has great explanatory power because psychoanalysis can be applied to completely opposite behavior patterns with equal aptness. Although this flexibility may seem valuable, Popper argued that a theory which cannot be proven false, one which can adapt to any critical environment, is not science, but pseudoscience. The critical component of a scientific theory is the element of risk. Its value lies in predictive rather than explanatory power. So it's, well this refers to a scientific theory, so this is going to be singular. So we can get rid of there and there, which are both plural. So then we have its or its's. So its's is going to be it is. So a cr the critical component of a scientific theory is the element of risk. It is value, lies in predictive rather than explanatory power. That doesn't sound right. This one is wrong. And our answer is choice A, it's. And then we have uh, Einstein's theory of gravitation was scientific because it made concrete predictions about what we should observe in the future and therefore could be falsified if inconsistent to these observations. And we're considering adding the sentence about predictive power can be illustrated by examining the works of Albert Einstein, who, though born in Germany, conducted much of his scientific work in the United States after he immigrated in 1933. All right. Well, we're not really talking about Albert Einstein that much, really. We're just thinking about uh, pseudoscience and offering these two as, uh, as uh, examples. So neither we can't keep the sentence in there. We can't add the sentence since it's not about Einstein, it's not about what he did. And let's see, 
Make us from the main topic of the paragraph, introduce early details, yeah. It burns the paragraph's focus on Einstein's theory of gravitation. Well, the paragraph's focus is not on Einstein's theory of gravitation, it's on pseudoscience. So this is wrong, and our answer is choice C. And we can move on to the next question. Alright, Einstein, okay. Einstein's theory of gravitation was scientific because it made concrete predictions about what we should observe in the future, and therefore could be falsified if inconsistent to these observations. Well, let's see. So, it's a kind of conventional expression that when we say it falsified, it's inconsistent. So, if we say inconsistent with these observations, right, that's just a con conventional expression we use. We don't say to these observations, or by, or for these observations. We say with these observations, right? That is just a conventional expression that we use. All right, let's keep going. Proper choice of falsibility as the line of demarcation between science and pseudoscience initially seemed counterintuitive to many scientists and philosophers. Traditionally, the difference had been located in the process of observation and experiment. In addition, many researchers preferred hypotheses that seemed less likely to be proven false. However, many members of the scientific community may, uh, may have, at least initially, misunderstood the concept of falsibility. Let's see. Could you delete the end of our sentence? Well, this is the sentence that continues the scientific community's rejection of the assertion. It talks about, it sets up everything that's going on here. It sets up the misconception that they're thinking about here. So it introduces that misconception, which is answer choice D. Right, we're, going, we're not going to delete the underlying sentence because it's very cr critical for the paragraph and doesn't have any more specific details. And our answer is choice D. All right, the overarching objective of Popper's approach is not to choose the weaker hypothesis and choose a hypothesis that will lead us towards truth. So this part is in conflict, direct conflict with this part. So we have to have a conflict word. We have and, not a conflict, and, not conflict, that, no, and but. But is our conflict word. So we have the overarching objective of Popper's approach is not to choose the weaker hypothesis, but to choose the hypothesis that will lead us towards truth. See, that fits. Because scientific theories can never be proven true, our progress depends on using theories that, like Einstein's theory of gravitation, can be proven false. Statements without predictive power are static. Because they cannot be disproven, we cannot move forward. Let's see. So because they cannot be disproven, we can move forward is one clause that should not have a comma right here, right? Because the this is because they cannot be proven, disproven, we cannot move forward. That's it, right? So we're not going to have a comma after because. Get rid of that. It has a comma after because. This also has a comma after because. And then we're left with just these two, which has a dash after because. So statements without predictive power are static because they cannot be disproven, we cannot move forward. Well, that also doesn't work, right? Because the there has to be some kind of separation between the static and the because. So we have statements without predictive power are static semicolon. Because they cannot be disproven, we cannot move forward. Because they cannot be disproven, we cannot move forward is an independent clause. Statements about predictive power are static as an independent clause, so we need a colon to separate them. This part, the first part sets up the second part, so we use a colon. And our answer is choice D. Keep going. Although the distinction between science and pseudoscience remains controversial, falsibility has many valuable implications for the scientific method and beyond. Well, let's see, we have the distinction is the subject here. The distinction between science and science is the subject. That is uh, singular, so this part needs to be singular. And remains is a singular word. Remains is a singular word, a verb, right? It's, it's, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but remember that in verbs, if it has the S on the end, it's singular, and if it doesn't have the S, it's usually plural, the opposite of now, right? So remains is singular, so it fits with the distinction, and our answer is choice A. All right, let's keep going. Although Popper devised this concept to answer a particular question, he believed that it was the key to answering many other problems as well. Falsibility can be applied universally because we search for truth in all areas, even though crude psychoanalytical approach is still studied. We're trying to reiterate a central idea of the passage. Let's see. So it's not that his theory has skeptics. It's not that this is still studied. It could be that we can only approach this truth by eliminating what is false, and we don't talk about the scientific method at all. So our answer is that we can only approach this truth by eliminating what is false. It's a powerful idea, and it completely supports the idea that science can only move forward if we use things that are falsifiable. That is it. 
for this passage. That is it for this writing formula passage. We have one more writing formula passage left in this set of five. After that, we'll look at some writing narrative passages, and I'll see you next time.